Megalodon was one of the greatest threats of the prehistoric world, a dangerous and very large shark that destroyed literally everyone in its path. However, even such a monster had its enemies, and some of them gave Megalodons a lot of problems. In this episode, I'll show you just such animals, which were 100 times more dangerous than Megalodon. Let's go! Leviathan When it comes to Megalodon, many people say or think that this shark was invincible and almost invulnerable. But Leviathan would argue with that. Leviathan Melvilli is perhaps the Megalodon's greatest rival. It's quite possible to say that this animal was much more dangerous than Megalodon. And interestingly enough, they lived at the same time. Leviathan is in fact the ancient sperm whale, but it was much more powerful than its modern descendants. These giants reached almost 60 feet in length and weighed 50 tons. Even the largest megalodons were inferior in size to Leviathan. Megalodons were also inferior to in terms of their main weapon and pride, their teeth. The name megalodon translates from Greek as big tooth, and you can't argue with that. The teeth of megalodon are really huge. They could reach 7.5 inches in length. But by this logic, Leviathan should have been called Megalodon, because the teeth of the largest Leviathan reached about 16 inches in length. Twice the superiority is something incredible. Both Leviathan and Megalodon fed on the same thing. They hunted whales and large fish. There wasn't enough food for them all, so Leviathan and Megalodon competed with each other and engaged in fierce battles. Leviathan was cooler than Megalodon by almost all parameters. They were smarter. They were whales, after all. They had developed echolocation. They had giant teeth, and they outshone any Megalodon in terms of size. Of course, Megalodon could win, but rarely. In direct confrontations, the prehistoric sperm whale often defeated the dangerous shark by simply biting it in half. This is like comparing a modern great white shark and a sperm whale predator can hardly compete with the toothed whale. Zygophysiter Next, we have another sperm whale. Zygophysiter viroli, also is an extinct cetacean species, often referred to as the killer sperm whale. It's fair enough. It's called the sperm whale because it was related to the prehistoric leviathan sperm whale, and it's called the killer because it was ruthless. Zygophysiter, by the way, is often compared to modern orcas, which are also known as killer whales. In terms of size, Zygophysiter was inferior to its older brother Leviathan. These sperm whales only reached 23 feet in length. Their teeth were also smaller, but at the same time, approximately the same as those of Megalodon, about 6 to 8 inches long. Unlike Leviathan, which relied on ramming power and incredible size, Zygophysiter probably took advantage of its small size and made agile and quick maneuvers while hunting megalodons. Yes, it did hunt them, since they lived in the same period. In addition, Zygophysiter successfully used echolocation, which allowed them to navigate in space and spot ambushes, including those of megalodons. So it was impossible to attack this whale stealthily. It read the information, stopped the attack, and savagely dealt with megalodons and other large prehistoric creatures. Allophysiter And one more predatory whale. It's clear from the name that Allophysiter were related to Zygophysiter. They were similar. Scientists believe that Allophysiter inhabited the place where Panama is now. At that time, it was still underwater, and in its place, there was a peculiar strait. It was through this strait that many of the sea creatures of the time that lived in the waters near North America swam. And it was in this strait that megalodons were often hunted. Allophysiter liked to ruin their hunt and attack these predators themselves. Their main trick was their number. Allophysiter swam in groups, so they posed a huge threat to any prehistoric animal, including megalodon. Leopluridon and here's the first animal in this episode which has never crossed paths with Megalodon. Leopluridon lived about 160 to 155 million years ago. There were no Megalodons, but there were plenty of dinosaurs back then. This plesiosaur wasn't afraid of them. It was the other way around. Leopluridon was so powerful and fearless that it was the dinosaurs that were afraid of it when it rushed out of the water and onto the shore and ate some inattentive lizard. For the most part, though, all its activity took place in the water. 
Having huge flippers, Leo Pluridon was an excellent swimmer. It waved its flippers like wings, so it was, in fact, an underwater bird. The giant plesiosaur had hefty speed and dived deeply, so hardly anyone could hide from it. Most of its prey was fish, large cephalopods, and marine reptiles. If Megalodon had lived at the same time as Leoplurodon, it would have suffered the same fate. Leoplurodon would have moved faster than Megalodon in combat, so it would have been able to exhaust the shark and finish it off. It could also attack it from behind. Skull studies show that Leoplurodon could pick up odors in the water with its nostrils. Predator could sniff out where Megalodon was hiding, swim up behind it unnoticed, and carry out a vicious massacre. Dunkleosteus. The mere sight of this creature suggests that it was extremely dangerous. That's right, Dunkleosteus is a typical monster from a very long time ago. The creature lived long before the dinosaurs, about 415 to 360 million years ago. Megalodon and Dunkleosteus are separated by about 400 million years of evolution. Even so, the old creature would have given a shark a hard time. Dunkleosteus is much smaller than Megalodon, but it had a stunning weapon, the jaws. Interestingly, unlike Megalodon, the jaws of Dunkleosteus had not teeth but bone plates. Some may think that they're worse than teeth, but not in the case of Dunkleosteus. The monster literally crushed its prey with its bony plates. Dunkleosteus' bite force was more powerful than that of many modern sharks, which give it a good chance to defeat Megalodon in a theoretical contest. Well, if there was a small Megalodon in front of it, Dunkleosteus wouldn't even eat it, it would just instantly open its mouth and a powerful stream of water would suck the shark into the mouth of the prehistoric monster. Dinosuchus But still, even with its bone plates, Dunkleosteus was noticeably inferior to Megalodon in terms of bite force. The situation with Dinosuchus is exactly the opposite, because scientists have not yet found any creature that would bite harder than this formidable and gigantic prehistoric crocodile. Scientists' calculations show that the bite force of Dinosuchus was approximately three times greater than that of Megalodon. That is, the crocodile would not even have to exert much force to bite the vicious shark in half. Megalodon itself was never able to try these teeth on itself because Dinosuchus lived tens of millions of years before it. But quite a few dinosaurs had such a bitter experience. Being a huge crocodile up to 40 feet long and weighing over 8 tons, Dinosuchus didn't hesitate to hunt many dinosaurs. These crocodiles also easily crushed the shells of giant sea turtles, ate large fish, and got almost any prey into their giant mouths. If they had lived at the same time, Megalodon could have been a prey too. I don't think this shark would have defeated such a nimble and powerful crocodile. By the way, the same thing's happening now. Crocodiles and sharks occasionally cross paths with each other and put up fights. In most cases, crocodiles win. They're more agile and dexterous. They have a stronger bite and stronger skin. The saltwater crocodile, the largest modern crocodile and owner of the strongest bite on the planet right now, does best in this regard. I'm sure it could compete with Megalodon and give it a hard time. So could several other modern animals. Let's see what else could stand up to Megalodon. Sperm Whale Since prehistoric killer whales were the Megalodon's main enemies, Modern sperm whales could cause these predatory sharks many problems. Unlike many other whales, sperm whales are predators. They can easily deal with huge squid and can also engage in a fight with a shark. Sperm whales are very large. Males grow up to 66 feet in length and weigh about 40 tons. It's not easy to bite and kill such a giant, so at least it would not be easy for Megalodon to fight with modern sperm whales. At the most, the toothy whales would have easily dealt with them in a matter of minutes. It'd be fair to arrange a battle between Megalodon and another shark. In my opinion, the bull shark would be an excellent contender. Many scientists recognize it as the most aggressive and dangerous modern shark on the planet, and not the great white shark. These predators mercilessly deal with stingrays, dolphins, sea turtles, and crustaceans. The bull shark is certainly inferior to Megalodon in terms of size, but it could defeat several not particularly strong Megalodons due to its recklessness, fearlessness, and unstoppable aggression. In general, it could win at the expense of its combativity. Belcher's Sea Snake And finally, an unusual opponent for a shark, a sea snake. 
This particular sea snake is not even close to as aggressive as the bull shark or other animals of this episode, but it has incredible venom. A few milligrams of the Belcher sea snake venom are enough to kill a thousand people. If you make this snake angry, it'll use its super venom to its full potential. So in a theoretical battle with Megalodon, the sea snake could poison a shark by biting it in a vulnerable spot, in the gills for example. In that case, Megalodon would have died quite quickly. That's all guys. What animal do you personally consider to be the strongest opponent for Megalodon? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.